Chapter 10 As soon as Mr. Tall had left the stage and we'd settled back into our seats, the second freak, Alexander Ribs, came out. He was more of a comedy act than a scary one, which was what we needed to calm us down after the terrifying start. I happened to look over my shoulder while he was on and noticed two of the blue-hooded people down on their knees cleaning blood from the floor. Alexander Ribs was the skinniest man I'd ever seen. He looked like a skeleton. There, was, uh, there seemed to be no flesh on him. He would have been frightening, except he had a wide, friendly smile. Funny music played, and he danced around the stage. He was dressed in ballet's clothes and looked so ridiculous that soon everyone was laughing. After a while, he stopped dancing and began stretching. He said he was a contortionist, somebody with bones like rubber who can bend every which way. First, he tilted his head back so far it looked like it had been cut off. He turned around so he could see his upside-down face. Then went on leaning back until his head was touching the floor. Then he put his hands around the backs of his legs and pulled his head through it until it was sticking up in front of him and it looked like he was growing out of his stomach. He got a huge round of applause for that, after which he straightened up and began twisting his body around like a curly, whirly straw. He kept twisting and twisting five times around until his bones began to creak from the strain. He stood like that for a minute and then began to unwind really, really fast. Next, he got two drumsticks with furry ends. He took the first drumstick and hit one of his ribs with it. it opened his, he opened his mouth and a musical note sprang out. It sounded like the noise pianos make. And then he closed his mouth and struck a rip on the other end. This time it was louder, a higher note. After a few more practice notes, he began to open his mouth and began playing songs. He played London Bridges Falling Down, some of the songs by the Beatles, and the theme tunes from a few popular TV shows. The skinny man left the stage to shouts for more, but none of the freaks ever came back to do an encore. After Alexander Ribs came Ramus Two Bellies, and he was as fat as Alexander was thin. He was enormous. The floorboards creaked as he walked out onto the stage. He walked close to the edge and kept pretending he was about to topple forward. I could see people in the front rows getting worried, and some jumped out of the way when he got too close. I didn't blame them. He would have squashed them flat as a pancake if he fell. He stopped in the middle of the stage. Hello, he said. He had a nice voice, soft and squeaky. My name is Ramus Two Bellies, and I really have two bellies. I was born with them the same way certain animals are. The doctors were stunned, and I was said to be a freak. That's why I joined the show and am here tonight. The ladies who had hypnotized the wolf man came out with two carts full of food, cakes, chips, hamburgers, packages of candy, heads of cabbage. There was stuff that I hadn't even seen before, never mind tasted. Yum, yum, Ramus said. He pointed to a huge clock being lowered by ropes from above. It stopped about ten feet above his head. How long do you think it will take me to eat all this? He asked, pointing to the food. There will be prizes for the person who guesses the closest. An hour, somebody yelled. Forty-five minutes, somebody else yelled. Two hours, ten minutes, 
And 33 seconds, another purse shouted. Soon everybody was calling out. I said an hour and three minutes. Steve said 29 minutes. The lowest guess was 17 minutes. When we were finished guessing, the clock started to tick. And Ramus started to eat. He ate like the wind. His arms moved so fast you could hardly see them. His mouth didn't even seem to close at all. He shoveled food in, swallowed, and moved on. Everybody was amazed. I felt sick as I watched. Some people actually were sick. Finally, Ramus scoffed the last bun, and the clock above his head stopped ticking. Four minutes and 56 seconds. He had eaten all that food in less than five minutes. I could hardly believe it. It didn't seem possible even for a man with two bellies. That was nice, Ramus said. But I could have used more dessert. While we clapped and laughed, the ladies in shiny suits rolled the carts away and brought out a new one. Packed with glass statues and forks and spoons and bits of metal. Before I begin, Rama said, I must warn you not to try this at home. I can eat things that would choke and kill normal people. Do not copy me. If you do, you may die. He began eating. He started with a couple of nuts and bolts, which he sucked down without blinking. After a few handfuls, he gave his big round belly a shake, and we could hear the noises of metal inside. His belly heaved, and he spat the nuts and bolts back out. If there had only been one or two, I might have thought he was keeping them under his tongue at the side of his cheeks. But not even Robert's too... But not even Rama's two bellies mouth was big enough to hold that load. Next, he ate the glass statues. He crunched the glass up into small pieces before swallowing it with a drink of water. He then ate the spoons and forks. He twisted them up into circles with his hands and popped them into his mouth and let them slide down. He said his teeth weren't strong enough to tear through metal. After that, he swallowed a long metal chain, then paused to catch his breath. His belly began rumbling and shaking, and I didn't know what was going on until he gave a heave, and I saw the top of the chain come out of his mouth. As the chain came out, I saw the spoons and forks were wrapped around it. He managed to poke the chain through the hoops inside of his belly. It was unbelievable. When Ramus left the stage, I thought nobody could top such an act. I was wrong.